1979 the year I was born, but it was also the year this was born. Lancia's Delta family car, quite boxy, Giugiaro designed vehicle. Today though, this isn't the one that really people either remember or care about. It's more about the Group A rally inspired homologation version that everyone talks about. This, the values of the Integrale continue to rise and rise. And it's a car that I remember fondly from my childhood. But I've come to Holland to find out why this car exists. This is called the Machuro Stradale. This is basically a Group A rally car that's been completely resto modded into a road friendly, beautifully executed, carbon smothered version that costs in excess of 300,000 euros. So in this episode, we're gonna find out who builds it, how it came about, and what I think of it when I take it out on the road. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. This episode is proudly supported by blackcircles.com, the UK's largest online tyre retailer. Now, my first question to you, Marco, is I was not expecting the sort of global authority on Lancia <laughs> Deltas to be in Holland, not Italy. How has that come about? Yeah, yeah we have to ask my parents why I'm here. Okay. Because, you know, I love Italy, Italian food, I love Italian cars. But at the end, it just, you know, one thing led to, each, uh, to another. I once started driving Lancia you know, in, with a Lancia Lambda from 1928 and from there, I know, and we never stopped. <laughs> wow. So the, your business is restoring deltas and sort of doing minor improvements on them to make them reliable and building rally cars. And then this is your sort of halo product, the Stradale. Yeah, the company started actually with rally cars. Okay. So for 25 years, we've been uh, building, rebuilding, servicing uh, rally cars up to the uh, highest level. Uh, and that's the background of the company. And because we drove uh, the Lancia Delta as a rally car, that's why we got into the road car, <laughs> not the other way around. Okay. So yeah. did, was, this always, was this always your kind of idea, like we should do a resto mod Delta Integrale, or was that something that just came about by accident? Well, we, of course you see the whole resto mod market pickup with examples like uh, Singer or uh, uh, Automobili Amos with the Futurista who did uh, 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 one you know, uh, idea of what a Delta should be. Yeah. And I was driving the rally car as a, you know, a amateur rally driver, which is still a very impressive car. You can still you know, be really upfront uh, in the field with a car that's 30 years old. Is that yours? Uh, well, not this one, but one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, you know, I would impress my friends with it. You know, if they would be in that car, they would be like, oh, what is this? It's a different world. And then on the other hand, I would see, you know, the road car, like, like this red one here. It was a bit disappointing. <laughs> yeah. Is I made well, a mistake, cause, actually. Cause I, a bought a, I bought a rally car, a yeah. Group A Delta first. Yeah. Drove that as a rally driver. And then I thought, I will buy a Delta for the street for yeah. every day and then I got disappointed. Is that because it's, it, or is it a combination of it's old now and maybe it wasn't put together very well when it was new? The difference between 
uh, the series car yeah. that Lancia built and the rally car is extremely big. Okay. And I thought, you know, I know how this car promises because everyone knows the car still. I think uh, everyone still knows the car, six time world championship. And everyone that sees a car, oh, you know, it's a fast car. Yeah. And I wanted the car to live, live up to that. So this is, is it an Evo? Is it Evo 1? Evo 1. It has Evo 2 wheels on there, but you know, over the years, people yeah. like the bigger wheels better. Yeah. And this is as powerful as they got, right? Yeah. That's, uh, so it's uh, just over 205 horsepower, this. Yeah. And now we've reached a point where this kind of a car has gone up, shot up in value so, so, exactly. so quickly. And I think that's why uh, there's a different market now. Yeah. Because, you know, it's, it's, it has always been an uh, expensive car to maintain. Yeah. For one, because it wasn't developed that well, because Lancia needed to, buy, uh, to build uh, 5,000 cars. They did. And they, they, they put just as much development effort in there as was necessary to right. get the ready car going. Yeah. And the rally car improved over the years that it was competing. Yeah. And um, if you ask uh, Yuwa Kankunu, who is our brand ambassador, he says, first year it was a, 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 a VW, a VW a Beetle. Yeah. And last year it was a Porsche 911. <laughs> so in six years, they made giant leap in, in performance. Yeah. It was faster than the Group B cars that were banned. Yeah. You know, so, and, the, and the, their road going uh, equivalent, they did nothing on it. Nostalgia is a, you know, a powerful disease and I wanted to drive a Lancia Delta Integrale, in this case an Evo 1, because of course, like all these amazing motorsport cars, it was based on an average car. The Delta was a pretty badly put together thing and um, like the Sierra Cosworths, I guess, Cosworth took a normal average family car to a new level, but there was still a lot of fundamental ropey things about it. The Delta Integrale has rattly plastics, that we know. The driving position, even on an Integrale, is a bit weird. I mean, it feels like you're driving a bus, almost. Uh, the seat, the steering wheel and the pedals aren't in a fantastic position. Now this particular version is a good version. This is one of the ones that Maturo owns their, their own vehicle and it's got a a revised, a revised internals of the turbo, it's got a different ECU, obviously got a different steering wheel, you can see that immediately, and a shifter actually. I love all the gauges in an Integrale, I remember the first time I sat in one and I just thought you were sitting inside an aircraft, all these different gauges, the needles flickering around, they were great. I mean it feels eager, but these things were quite heavy. These, the Audi Quattros, because of this full-time four-wheel drive, you know, the drivetrain is a heavy drivetrain. Full throttle. So much turbo lag. It still feels quick, you know. It does, it still feels really quick. I can't imagine what this feels like with double the power, but then again, it's not just double the power, is it? It's more control in so many other elements of the car. And that is what the Stradale's ethos is. The suspension is far superior. The gearbox is far superior. It's built to be able to handle all that power and put it down on the ground, give you that feel. It's not just a silly, a silly torque and power figure. So people who are watching this are going, I don't understand what, what's so different about your Stradale. <laughs> well, let's, talk, let's start with the skin. It's okay. carbon fiber. It's carbon fiber. So every panel is carbon fiber? Uh, every, uh, yeah, every panel is, uh, you can hear it, right? It's, uh, it's yeah. carbon fiber. Uh, I mean, we did that to create, of course, the most extreme Delta we could build. Yeah. We also did that to improve uh, the build quality, the panel gaps. Uh, to get it really more to a quality level you would expect today. And the, the main visual differences sort of at the front end to the standard car? Yeah, when we started the project we had, you know, we started it from a motorsport vision. Yeah. Uh, driving the, the Group A Delta, uh, we built an exact uh, copy of the, um, of the car as it was used by, for instance, UI in 1992. Yeah. And um, we have to remake all the parts because you can't buy them anymore. They are over 30 years old. They are more expensive than gold and they're used for 30 years. I mean, you don't yeah. want to 
you know, have your life depending on uh, aluminium part from 30 years old that maybe was cracked and welded. So, so since we rebuilt these rally cars um, for competitive level and we, we increased the performance, but also the durability of those cars, yeah. uh, that's what we took as the basis for this car. So this is basically the rally car, but we gave it the skin for of a uh, road car. Those cars, there were 5,000 built and you can get the parts, whatever, from Asia <laughs> yeah. nowadays, not yeah. from Italy. <laughs> yeah. um, and these cars, there were a couple of hundred built and everything was handmade. Yeah. So this is very, I would say, exotic uh, uh, um, a car uh, because we need to build everything from scratch. So here we go. The Majoro Stradale. So the, the whole premise of this car, like we've said, as we've done the war round, is that it's, it sort of is a rally car for the road, but with, with some com level of comfort some level of quiet but it still can be an intense vehicle so the performance hasn't been dumbed down level of comfort is there and obviously it's been remodeled for the 21st century but a couple of crucial details is there is still a lot of noise it isn't a straight cut gearbox and obviously it's not sequential but what it is it's a car with a double the power of the original Evo. And you can go over, that was a speed ramp. And because of these reserve shocks that are fully adjustable, including the ride height, just here on, the, on these controls, 10 different increments, you can go over speed ramps at 60 miles an hour. They say it's absolutely fine. I'll prove it by doing it again. Don't worry, this is private property. Ready? This is a speed ramp. Three, two, one. There and there. So the ride comfort is actually superb. And the whole point of this car, and I guess the price reflects that, is the fact that they have ironed out the many imperfections of the original Hot Delta. And that's why you can give it this much more power because it can now handle it and you can control it. So you're obviously getting a lot of vocal turbo and you can hear that there's a whir that's the diff. I can't believe I've got the U-Ha button illuminated. The U-Ha button means you get 400 horsepower. It releases 100 more than the normal in this in particular car, which is 300. Remember the standard, you know, the original Evo was 200. 200. And the H-Pan gearbox, although it is a different gearbox, it's a remanufactured gearbox, it's lovely. It's so, it's so definite. I really love it. And to look at, it's comical. It looks like a piece of giant Lego to me. I'm pretty sure there's a Lego piece which looks just the same. But obviously being four-wheel drive, Group A inspired, it's that grip and control and the nimble, the nimble feeling of it because it's, because it's not a very big car, it's not a very big car at all. So I heard you guys saying that there's about 1500 hours into the build of this. Yeah, not the development, but the build. Not in the development. <laughs> and, this, and this is the first one? Is this the demonstrator? This yeah, one? this is what we call the zero car. It's a demonstration the car. So car. it's, I would say, 95%, maybe more, where we want to be. Yeah. Well, I know when, when, before I came here, we've chatted about the fact that you, a lot of customers bring a standard car to you and you kind of tweak it and evolve it slightly. Not a full resto mod, but kind of iron out the issues. Yeah. So they make, you make it a significantly more reliable car. Yeah, for us, the background is that, you know, coming again from the rally, uh, the rally cars, the factory rally cars, 
uh, that they built, they were used for like one rally, maybe two. And, uh, you know, in, in, during the stages, they would probably change some parts. Yeah. And then they would be sold. Right. So reliability was not an issue there. <laughs> because they, did, they didn't let, wait long enough for them to go. No, right. exactly. They were, they were gone before that. Okay. And, and, you know, with our rally cars that we built for privateers, we can't ask this amount of money and say, after one rally, maybe you should come back and we'll have a different <laughs> one for you. So okay. we worked a lot of on reliability in getting, getting these, these machines working, you know, uh, and trying to break them. Yeah. And then, you know, improve them and getting them even better. Yeah. And these years of experience, it was easy from there, coming from there, it was easy to get the faults out of these cars. Yeah. And it was just a lack of development, but it's not that, you know, uh, in general, the engine, it's a strong engine. Well, that's what I want to talk about next. I want to pop the bonnet so you can tell me about the difference in drivetrain to Absolutely. this and this. Now, I'm seeing a lot of billet, <laughs> but I'm also seeing a lot of uh, extra tubing going on, a lot, a lot of strengthening. Yeah. Because yeah. I know it's got an internal cage yeah, because the, I think the weakest point of the uh, of the Delta, you know, it coming from 1979 yeah. uh, as a family car, uh, more like a Volkswagen Golf, uh, but then from Italy, is that it's a it's a very non-rigid, a weak car with a <laughs> lot of torsion in the in the body. Is it? And for the road car, they didn't bother in improving that, which is why a lot of the uh, Deltas you can see if you open the door are cracked. Really? Uh, and that's stress uh, cracks. Stress cracks. Wow. And specifically after 30 years, maybe they're tuned a bit, maybe big, 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 uh, bigger brakes. So that's a big problem of the car, which of course with a rally car you don't have. Yeah. So, but apart from the cracks, it also is of course a negative effect on your road handling because yeah. a car that moves, it's yeah. more difficult to get it, you know, yeah. uh, driving fast. Yeah. And this, this engine is the same block. This is just so people know, this is not a different engine. It's the same no. engine. Because you had the Group A regulations, right? That yeah. uh, the block uh, had to be the same. Of course, you could, you could do technical improvements, but all, you know, uh, according the rules of the FIA. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, for us, it would have been easy to, of course, put a big turbo on and do a lot of, you know, more modern changes, but we wanted to stick to the era that the car comes from, which made our life a bit more difficult. Yeah. But on the other hand, that's what we specialize in. We're specialized in rally cars from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and of course the, the, the Delta more, uh, uh, the most uh, the Delta. And um, that's what we use for this car. Everyone knowing uh, a Group A Delta yeah. recognizes this layout of the engine uh, and the way this is built up. So what about, what are the sort of main differences compared to the old car then? Yeah, in, you know, in itself, it's of course the internals of the engine that are improved dramatically because, you know, 205 uh, HP, 400. So double the horsepower. And uh, at the same technical uh, uh, layout with the same turbo, so no bigger turbo. The internals of the turbo are improved, of course, so that it uh, picks up faster. Yeah. Um, and of course, I mean, we have to be honest. The computer, we use the old housing, but it's a modern computer that we developed ourselves to make the engine run, you know, better. Yeah. I love um, that. So old ECU housing, new computer yeah. inside. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, you know, what we what we allowed ourselves to do. Uh, same you can see here, of course, yeah. these can be electronically uh, adjusted. Yeah. And with the old cars, that was, of course, non-existing in those days. It's obviously a full time four wheel drive car. Yeah. And it still is. Yeah. Is the gearbox the same as the old school uh, no nah, this is you know the rally cars drive with a dog box yeah and you know the abart dog boxes are extremely expensive and not very durable so um we rebuilt those for the rally cars in a more sturdy way but those are not drivable on a daily basis i mean you would have a a lot of sounds around you and you can shift slightly faster of course yeah. but uh, so we we have a strengthened uh, five box in here so for instance uh, with the axles we use um, uh, a formula one derived material so that they can actually twist before they break okay you know so all these kind of little things we have over two thousand parts on these cars that we have developed ourselves really 2000 yeah you don't see that because this car looks like that car it does i know this is why i wanted to do the story because yeah. at a flash it just looks like a really beautifully painted yeah exactly uh restored yeah integrally but not 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 the case no see so this is uh if you really want the very best 
yeah. on on the Lancia Delta, uh, uh, then this is what you can get. This is it. And I, I dare to say that out of experience. Okay. It's the same skin, but it's a different car. If I would put the rally car next to this, uh, then this car would more mimic the rally car in terms of underpinnings. Than, than that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now yeah, this is the rally car in terms of underpinnings, but it has the skin yeah. of the of the road going version. I'm following an Evo, an original Integrale Evo that um, the Xeon's driving. They've got such road presence, despite the fact that they're they're not a very big car. They're a stocky car, but they're not big. And this is a hundred kilos lighter than that car there but double the power. So all these carbon fiber panels, and yes, you could add in a bit more soundproofing, which they could do for a customer. And they're also gonna do an optional quicker steering rack, which they've just trialed. But I think the steering feels lovely on this. It feels positive and enthusiastic. It feels very well thought through. No servo on the brakes, so you've got to be hard and definite with your right foot because it's rally inspired. turbo but rebuilt different ECU made in house and amazingly for a resto mod the engine the block is is the original the engine is still can be identified back to well into the 70s with the Fiat 131 our bath the mirror fury but that was a rear-wheel drive car the Integrale of course bred for Group A rally because Group B had died and that's where you get this amazing grip. It is not a car, it's not a GT car. You wouldn't want to be on the motorway for, for hours and hours and hours. But at the same time, it's really comfortable, I have to say. It's an oral experience, but it's not an uncomfortable experience. The Maturo Stradale comes wearing Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres for outright grip and performance. These are 215 40 17 in size. Now when it comes to needing tyres for your car, visit the Black Circles website. Head to the Black Circles website, enter your vehicle registration number and your postcode, and then you'll find the most suitable tyres for your car and your budget. There are thousands of reviews of different tyres from real customers to help you choose the best tyres for your car. And with the Black Circle's click and fit service with over 2,000 tyre fitting partners, there will be a garage or a mobile tyre fitter conveniently located near you. Now, just before we flick these cars around, you, Marco, described a couple of the differences of the front end design on your Stradale to the original. Can you go through those again and talk to us about the back end as well? Because this is a cleaner back end. Yeah, I think that's, you know, it was our intention to honour the GeoGiaro design. Not, not to recreate the Delta as it would have been today. Yeah. So we wanted to keep the differences very limited, but on the other hand, it's a special car. So you want it to stand out from uh, every other Delta. So we did that by improving the metalization, you know, both inside and outside. Yeah. And also in the front, you know, where the indicators uh, are on a classic Delta, uh, we made the mesh uh, to cover those and we put LED uh, indicators in there. Yeah. Where the fog lights are, we made brake ducts because that's what it is on the rally car. But we, you know, very nicely uh, incorporated them in the in the bumper. Uh, of course, we have um, the protection uh, for the engine. I've, I've noticed some serious Kevlar going exactly. on. Exactly. So yeah. and you know, we finished that off with a carbon uh, a front lip. So these are all the changes that are visually very um, restrained, yeah. Uh, yeah. but on the other hand, if you know the car and you see it, you start appreciating it. That's at least what we're aiming for. You know, also, it's very small differences. We took out the reversing lights, uh, the big white reversing oh, yeah. lights. They're oh, yeah. gone. So yeah, they're on yeah. this car. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, for instance, how crazy we are. We changed this line with 14 millimeter to be exactly in line. Uh, with the backlights, which are now completely red, of course. 
no yeah. orange indicators. See, that line is different to that line. Yeah, it's 14 millimeters. I mean, you wouldn't probably notice, but for us, that made the car just more clean. And, yeah. you know, making it simpler actually emphasizes the great design that Mr. Giugiaro made back, the, back yeah. in those days. It's phenomenal. And that's what we wanted to, uh, to honor instead yeah. of, we, we're not having the idea that we can improve uh, the design. Yeah. We wanted to honor it, and that's why the changes are so subtle. When customers come to you, do you think that you're going to have to find a donor car for the project, or do they bring a car to you? Well, for the Stradale, we built from scratch. Okay. We use a 16 volt uh, body. Yeah. Uh, and since, it, I mean, it would have been easier to start without the body even, but we need the homologation to go on the road, right? Yes. So that's why we need uh, the body. But for the rest, nothing's used. Uh, I mean, there's nothing really of I've the old car in I've there anymore. Yeah, I'm looking forward to having a quick look around your... Yeah, we can show you uh, uh, how the process uh, goes. Let's do a bit of a zero to 62. Getting a bit of a squill from the, uh, from the brakes. corners and this is where it really darts it just darts so good so good the way it just leads you and this is a car that I've always I've always admired the Integrale I mean I have been grinning since I first got into this because it's just my kind of car and it's my kind of era but this particular version the Stradale there's so many little visual and mechanical improvements I love what they've done with this it still feels retro but the build quality with the carbon fibre and the Alcantara, the seating position is spot on, it really is. They've, they've not lost their touch with what the car was. For me, this was the wow, there's some serious changes going on here, but a good like combination of retro and kind of futuristic and modern materials. Yeah, what we wanted is, uh, we wanted to mimic the rally car interior. Because of course the Delta has a very um, uh, recognizable uh, dashboard uh, with the meters uh, for, uh, for a for lot a Delta. of meters. A lot of meters, <laughs> you know. Uh, but then again, these are the meters that were used in the rally car. And since it's a rally car for the road, we said, okay, we we need to use the the, the rally car interior. Yeah. So the other thing that I noticed is the exposed gear shift. Yeah. And the, and, and the shifter. Yeah. This is uh, so similar to the original, which is just dead straight yeah it's a rally style uh, shifter yeah and i think that's what goes with the car so the whole middle part is uh of the, of the dashboard is gone because yep. we want it to be functional and again uh, mimic the rally car there's a hydro hydraulic uh, handbrake of course nice. which is uh i think visually an interesting detail but also cool. goes with the rally car but um you know we we, tr we try to give this rally feel to it we wanted to have to have a luxury feel, a luxury uh, feel to it, yeah. and we mimicked a bit. I don't know if I hope you recognize a little bit of Lancia Delta S4, the street version. Yeah, the seats with yeah. these. Uh, uh, these seats are amazing. Buckets. So they're carbon buckets, but they got a real plush. Yeah. Feel to the Alcantara. Normal belts are not race harnesses, exactly. so then people can still go in the back. Yeah, but those are choices that the client can make, of course, yeah. because we we can also deliver the car without rear seating with full harness uh, yeah. uh, belts in there, of course. And the roll cage is so tight to the sides and the roof, which I like because I climbed in the back and I can fit in it. Yeah, yeah, I think so that's really important that the car. It is a five door, and I think we should. Uh, it was would have been very easy not to to, to recreate the five door. Yeah. But uh, also with rigidity, of course, would have been easier. Yeah. But I think this is what the car was, and in this way you can still use it. Uh, that's really cool. I like that. I've said this before in videos, like um. You know, the future of resto mods is so bright because people want a car which sort of fits on the road. They want a look, a, cl a classic look with the DNA of something 
that has been before, but maybe a little bit more usable in the real world. And I feel very privileged to have been invited over here by the Maturo team to experience it. And I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am because it's spot on. For me, it's this combination of that incredible Giugero design that's been refined by these guys. But the way the drivetrain and the rigidity and the inputs for the braking and the steering, it just feels that, that much better, that much more definite. Speed ramps. Amazing, amazing. The Matoro Stradale. You've got to really want one of these. They're over 300,000 euros. I mean, a mint, absolutely flawless Integrale Evo will cost you a hundred grand maybe now. So it's three times more than that and then some. But they're not in the game for volume here. They're maybe gonna make two of these a year. So the question is, is, is that good value? I think what it is, certainly from my perspective, I'm looking at the build and the finish and the way it feels. Those elements are all really there. They're all really there. It's really, it's comfortable and it's quick. I don't think I've ever seen so many Integrales in one place, actually. <laughs> I a lot, it's a lot. I mean, you're it's probably bored of them now. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, they, but they don't have secrets for us anymore, but we still develop on these cars. This is great. So yeah, this you, is uh, my car. This no is engine. I need to run. <laughs> right, okay, so this is yours. Yeah. And you were saying that there's, there's a great big banner on the wall with you are Kankin and leaning against your, the car you own now. Yeah, that's a car that we own as well, uh, which is a winner of the 1987 Olympus Rally. Wow. And uh, of course we love the car, but I also love his outfit, don't you? I was going to say, <laughs> have you got the socks and the shoes? Absolutely, I've got the whole outfit. Oh, it's just amazing. Just training to get the moustache. Amazing. For the rest. <laughs> well, we know, we've walked past this, yeah. with this bare white shell. Yeah. This, this is basically uh, uh, just uh, finished from our body shop and it's repainted. It's a La Perla car. So, uh, it's beautiful pearl. It was water, uh, water blasted. Uh, of course, everything was repaired and then strengthened. Yeah. And um, first stage uh, done on this car. That car is just slightly further also. Yeah. A bare uh, metal uh, restoration. That's gorgeous. In a standard black. I can see the reinforcements you were talking about yeah. where, the, where your seam weld certain key parts. and That's not a Delta. That's not a Delta, but that's one of the other cars that we uh, manufacture. Uh, it's a rally version of the uh, Lancia 037. Wow. So we built those uh, also original uh, specifications. So this is exactly the engine, uh, uh, completely renew, uh, newly built. Uh, this is our body shop where we do uh, actually the welding uh, ourselves. It's busy in there. It's busy in there. So that's, a, that's a Delta shell, having reinforcements, no doubt. That's neat. So these are two Group A cars. That's a, a Group N car. So it's slightly it? less uh, competent. Yeah. It's not a Delta, but it's flipping amazing. I love it. <laughs> really, really cool. So now we build and rebuild our own uh, engines. So this is the engine for the white car you just saw over there. Oh, okay. This is an uh, uh, engine for a rally car, for uh, actually my own Group A car that's, oh, that's there. Your, so yours is it? Yeah. So I won't be driving uh, this weekend, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm, am I'm amazed at the kind of power that you can get from them. Yeah, 400 you know, uh, horsepower. 400 horsepower yeah. for, for that thing with the standard um, kind of ex diameter turbo. Yeah, that's exactly, amazing. exactly. Well, that's up to this guy, otherwise we wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, getting an engine to deliver a lot of power, I mean, is fairly easy. Yeah. But getting the power delivered in a way that you can use it, which is very important, of Re course, reliable. specifically with turbo engines. Yeah. Uh, and in a way that, you know, the, the whole car <laughs> stays in one piece. <laughs> I mean, if you change one thing, you know, normally you shift the problem to another aspect of yeah. the engine or the drivetrain. Yeah. And that's, of course, with the years of experience that we have with the rallying, 
um, we, you know, we, we, we learn. I know that there's another room next door, which Absolutely. has got more integrales in it. Absolutely. A, a, race, a, a, ra a race truck, a load of parts. Yeah, some fun cars. We'll show some footage of it. We haven't got time <laughs> to delve into it today. Do you wish that you were more interested in a, in a more popular car? You know, like, do you look at guys with Mark 1 Escorts and go, you guys have got it easy, you can buy a whole car. <laughs> yeah, that's true on the video on the other end. This is uh, part of the fun. And I know now that, you know, with the Delta, you know, uh, we're very far with it. We work on the 037, we work on the Ferrari 308. I, I think we like this kind of challenges. Uh, otherwise, we would have been doing something else. It's a, it's a hell of a thing. <laughs> but I have to admit, sometimes, you know, why did we start this? Yeah. At, uh, and where do we stop? <laughs> but then you just look at the thing parked outside and you just go. Exactly, exactly. It's a, it's a one, uh, once in a lifetime uh, chance to, uh, to improve a car that was already iconic in your youth. I mean, yeah. I, I thought we have to do this and we have to make sure that everyone that likes a Delta can really enjoy it because I think it's, it's an icon that needs to, uh, yeah. to stay. So presumably most of the people that come to you will bring a car for some minor improvements or some minor restoration. Yeah, or they're fed up with the problems they had or they, you know, they used to go to a workshop that doesn't quite have the experience we have. Or they want, like I, uh, my own experience, they want their Delta to be competitive to nowadays standards. Yeah. I mean, with different kind of clients, but in general, it's clients that want to have the very best driver's car. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's what we aim to do here. We know that nostalgia and sentiment are both expensive diseases, and I'm kind of all right with that. I mean, Integrales, Mint Evolutions are fetching a hundred grand nearly now. Are they worth it? Well, they're still very good cars. They've got rattly plastic dashes. They weren't very well made, but most of us don't seem to care. But crucially, what do I think about the Machuro here? the Stradale. On the one hand, it's extremely expensive. Of course it is. But these guys aren't expecting to sell dozens and dozens and dozens of them. They're a very, very specific, ultra niche, incredibly well engineered car. And actually to that end, it drives so much better than I expected it to. It's been a really pleasant shock. I hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride here in Holland. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe. I will put a link in the description below for both merch if you want to buy some Late Break Show merch or you want to join us on Patreon and you get early access to videos like this and blogs written by me. Um, I am now going to drive home but sadly not in a boxy arched car that was born the same year that I was. Sad emoji face. <laughs>